Hello everyone and welcome to not an episode of the Jams and Tea podcast. We are off this week, but we with good reason because among other things, I spent the weekend away in the capital city of my wonderful country, Aotearoa, New Zealand. I was in Wellington specifically to see my favorite working band in the world, live in concert, Big Thief who rounded out, I guess, the latest leg of their world tour here in New Zealand and played what I can only describe as one of the best shows I've ever seen, although I am a little bit biased as a huge Big Thief fan in Wellington just last night from when I'm recording this. Well, everything around passes Would you smile forever and never cry experience as a New Zealander to get to see a band that I have essentially been and a very distinctly American band that I have been essentially fixating on throughout this entire year and beyond but specifically ever since the February release of their most recent studio album their fifth studio album the astonishing dragon new warm mountain I believe in you which of course is the album that they're supporting with this particular tour and an album that I'm gonna have much more to say on, spoiler alert, when we finally get around to doing our best albums of 2022 video. Anyone who knows me particularly well will know that not only is the new Big Thief album one of my favorite albums of 2022, it is actually my number one favorite album of 2022. I consider it to be essentially the greatest rock record of recent years, certainly the greatest rock double album of recent years and it has been a fixture of my life ever since its release essentially a summary and victory lap of everything that makes the new york band one of the most exciting intriguing original and refreshing in all of indie rock essentially so it was with great excitement and huge anticipation that i finally managed to get to wellington to see them live last night and they did not disappoint supported by my fellow Dunedinite artist Maxine Funk Big Thief themselves put on an amazing show rocketing at the opening with the one two emotional but not necessarily sonic punch of Magic Dealer the closer off of UFOF and of course Simulation Swarm
my favorite thing about Big Thief, or one of the things you notice immediately seeing Big Thief live, and I'm sure this is, you know, true of many great bands, but you can tell these four people are a family. Like, you can tell that a lot of life, a lot of experience, but most importantly, a lot of love runs between all four of them. They seem to have this kind of wordless and intimate way of communicating as they perform both sort of intuitively and complementing each other with their own unique and specific skill sets that they bring to the band but also there's this deep intimacy that comes through in any big thief performance and i mean the venue that i saw them in the enormous michael fowler center in the center of wellington you know, it's a large theater, it's a massive open room, and it is not necessarily an environment that is all that conducive to intimacy necessarily, but the intimacy between the members of Big Thief on stage was palpable at every single juncture and in every single song. And a remarkable thing happened as the concert went on. Initially, I was seated in the fourth row from the front on an aisle seat, initially it was, uh, a seated show, you know, it seemed like the majority of the audience, the demographic, was typically an older demographic, typically, you know, it wasn't necessarily as though Big Thief were the sort of band where you'd be piling into the pit, but w before I would say even half of the set list was through, already people had moved up to the stage and were just kind of standing there hanging over the stage just singing along to every song and absolutely radiating an energy of love onto the stage. And the most beautiful thing about it was that you could see visibly how much it affected Adrienne and Buck and James and Max, all four of them. It wasn't that their energy was at any point low earlier in the show, although they certainly did start with majority quieter songs or softer songs. But when that crowd participation and when that movement out of seats and towards the front of the room really started to kick in, you could see them become more and more animated. And that too was reflected in the performances that they put on with some of the most incandescent Big Thief songs. I myself was quick to get right to the front of that room and have myself be hanging there right over the stage, probably about 10 feet away from Adrienne for the entire second half of the show, just basking in the energy that this woman just completely radiates purely through her own intimate connection with her instrument, her playing, and of course, the loving support of her bandmates as well. You can tell that Adrienne is generally a fairly introverted person, there were some beautifully awkward attempts at stage banter early on. So you just have that ocean out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, it's amazing. Like, you just see it every day. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, there's something about having the ocean in the middle of your city that I felt completely comfortable just walking around in my underwear bare feet. But really when you're that close to Adrienne and the rest of the members of the band, you're really just completely taken by how much fire and energy and passion they have for each individual component of what they do respectively and the cumulative synergy of those individual talents and the way that they come together. Even in the songs that originally are from Adrienne's solo material, songs like Terminal Paradise, songs like Injidar, songs like Not A Lot Just Forever, which the band brought to life. Oh, 
between those four people on stage and every single other person in that room. Certainly the, the ever-growing, swelling group of us who were right there at the front of the stage. It was cool to see a sort of career summary performance from Big Thief, although I will say that the show was fairly light on songs from the first couple albums, which I am not really in any way disappointed with the show, although I would have absolutely loved to have seen some more of my favorite songs from Masterpiece or Capacity. Uh, they did play Paul from Masterpiece, which was early on in the show, and of course, one of the most one of their most popular songs that got a big roar of approval as soon as it started, and everyone was singing along, and it was just a beautiful moment. to play Masterpiece, which I would have loved to have seen. And I don't know whether this was intentional or not, but they kind of 
and just started doing this really pared back, almost slowcore-esque rendition of that song, where essentially Adrian did the whole song, essentially Adrian and the band did essentially the whole song in this muted, almost monotonous, sort of uh, tense tone. entire crowd erupted when they seamlessly transitioned from that intro into Spud Infinity, which was the last song of the night. It completely brought the house down.
things that was notable about the performance, about the date, was that it was the last date of the tour, and so they were incredibly emotional and referred to this throughout the show at multiple different points. Buck especially, I think, was the spokesperson for the band in terms of the sheer gratitude that he expressed to everyone in the audience, and at times you could tell that he and Adrienne, Max and James too, were almost overcome by the sheer warmth and love in the in the room from the audience. You know, it's a funny thing, I think. Uh, seeing a show here in New Zealand, it doesn't really matter what band it is, but it's certainly true of, like, you know, American indie bands. You get this real sense of, like, deep gratitude that they're even there in the first place, especially now, given how hard it is for, you know, indie bands, for bands that aren't massive stadium sellout acts to be able to tour globally and to come to places like New Zealand. It's something that is becoming more and more of a rarity. And so for a band like Big Thief, who are definitely in the good graces of critics and publications and general audiences at this stage of their career, they've built up enough acclaim and esteem to be able to afford this trip. You know, it was an opportunity that you didn't want to miss because you could not take it for granted. I mean, even they weren't unaffected by the burdensome cost of touring. At one point, Adrienne did mention that essentially all the acoustic guitars that she's using across this tour are all hired, essentially, at each place that they go to because the cost of um, transporting them is too expensive. So there was this real sense of like treasuring the experience that was happening in the, in the room and it was absolutely mutual between the audience and between the band themselves. A huge highlight for the night and something that I wasn't expecting at all. I don't know if they've been doing, they've probably presumably been doing this across the tour, but I deliberately avoided looking up previous set lists or anything like that. I just wanted to go in completely blind. So a huge surprise was hearing them debut two new as yet unreleased, presumably unrecorded songs, Happy With You and Vampire Empire. The former being this kind of lyrically sparse but incredibly emotionally intense romantic love song that I think completely captivated the room instantaneously. The second, the latter of which, Vampire Empire, being similarly a romantic and sort of deeply felt and emotional love song that was blossomed into something huge and catchy and completely captivating across its six minute runtime, it was really a sight to behold. Watching TV tired, bleeding on the bed, the milk has just expired, all the leaves are dead. I'm not quiet, you've been quiet, just receiving what you said Reeling, feeding, feeling filled by everything you said I see that you see yourself through all the books you read Overwhelmed with guilt and realizing the disease You give me chills, I had it with the tears No, nothing you are, nothing we are, nothing with the pills And empty till she sits, alive until she kills
debut of Vampire Empire especially and the performance of Not, the incredible snarling six minute centerpiece of the album Two Hands as to what was the highlight of the night performance wise. I mean Not has on it both on its record and in all of the live recordings you'll find of it basically anywhere a song that is just so ridiculously intense to experience and absolutely mind-melting in terms of Adrienne's performance in particular.
I'm still buzzing from the experience. It was an absolutely fantastic concert. It was something that clearly meant as much to the people on stage, Adrian Linker, Buck Meek, Max Soliarchik, James Krivchenia, hopefully I nailed those names. It clearly meant as much to them as it did to every single other person in the room. And to be surrounded by people singing along to Spud Infinity and Paul and Not and even Not A Lot Just Forever was truly special. It was one of the best shows that I've ever seen. I will treasure the memory of it forever. And obviously, if you get a chance on any of their subsequent tours, do not pass up the opportunity to see Big Thief. I am incredibly grateful that I got this opportunity. I'm incredibly grateful to them, to their touring agents and whoever arranged their shows as well, that they were able to come to New Zealand and put on not one but two shows here. It means the world to us. It was beautiful to see and is the kind of experience that especially for me as someone who just isn't does not get to be privy to a lot of live music from bands that I love and know from across the world it's a rare thing and it is the perfect capstone to a year essentially bookended by beautiful experiences for me with this band both in discovering their new album as it came out and falling deeply in love with all 20 of its songs to hear having many of them and many others immortalized forever. This won't be the last time I talk about Big Thief this year, but I hope for all of you, whether you're a fan or whether you're just someone who's dipped your toes into their music, you can see and feel the beauty and completely resplendent power of the art that they put out into the world and I hope that you get the experience to bask in that if you haven't already. But let me know what were some of your favorite shows that you've seen this year. What are some of the great live bands that are currently on the circuit at the moment? I want to hear from you. I may not get a chance to see many of them if they don't come my way, but I still want to hear what are, in your opinions, the best touring bands out there at the moment. What do you think of Big Thief? What do you think of the new record? What do you think of their show in general? If you've seen them as well, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And we'll be back again very soon with more videos reflecting on the year in music, counting down some of our favorite and least favorite records from 2022, and looking ahead to the future very soon.